And really the reason why people get magnesium deficiency, it's either gonna be inadequate intake or it could be poor absorption, right? So we may not be consuming enough. We also may not be absorbing enough because we don't have enough stomach acid. Stomach acid is key for actually chelating minerals, zinc, magnesium, calcium, and absorbing that into our system. So we need optimal stomach acid. So a lot of people are very low in stomach acid. They're eating on the go, they're eating bad foods that stress their system, and that can cause low stomach acid, low mineral absorption. People with celiac disease or irritable bowel may not be able to absorb enough magnesium from their diet. So that can be a really big factor as well. If you have blood sugar imbalances, if you have insulin resistance, we actually need insulin to get magnesium into the cell. So if we have insulin resistance and blood sugar dysregulation, we're not gonna be able to actually get the magnesium into the cell where it can balance the calcium to magnesium ratio, where it can act on the NMDA receptor, where it can reduce substance P levels, where it can optimize vitamin D absorption. And so if that's the case, we're gonna end up with a magnesium deficiency. In fact, really common, anybody with insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes, they're all magnesium deficient. Like we've gotta really upregulate their magnesium levels and as part of the process of helping them get well. So that's one way. And then also we can have too much excretion. We're gonna excrete a lot if we're over consuming caffeine, if we're drinking a lot of alcohol, if we're eating a lot of processed foods, high carbohydrate foods, we're gonna excrete more of this. Um, if we're taking certain types of medications, almost all medications cause us to excrete more magnesium. And so we might be losing too much, we might not be absorbing enough, or we might not be consuming enough magnesium. Either way, research says that roughly 80 to 90% of our population is magnesium deficient on a chronic basis. And then even if you're healthy, the more stress you're under, the more you're using magnesium. So even like somebody like myself that's very aware of this, I can go through periods of time where I'm magnesium sufficient, and then let's say this is the threshold, I'm under more stress, magnesium goes down, right? And I've got to upregulate it. And so you could, most people, even healthy people, are going to at least be, be magnesium deficient at throughout different periods of time throughout the day. So supporting your magnesium levels is super critical for overall health. So how do we go about that? How do we optimize our magnesium levels? Well, the RDA says you need about 300 to 420 milligrams of magnesium a day, depending on if you're a male or female. Males typically need more. Your, bo your overall body size, your age, you know, they say men over 30 need roughly around 420 milligrams, whereas like a woman under 30, roughly around 300 milligrams. And of course, the more overall body mass you have, the more magnesium in general that you need, the less body mass, the less you need. Now, in functional medicine, we say the optimal is really about 450 to 800 milligrams. That's what we're looking at in the functional nutrition world. We wanna make sure that we're not just, you know, patching up some of these symptoms, but we're optimizing our overall mitochondrial function and our overall expression. So we need more magnesium. And in some cases, we'll do something called magnesium loading, where we'll do something like a thousand milligrams of magnesium a day for a period of time, and sometimes even more to help optimize magnesium levels for somebody that was very, very deficient in magnesium. So when we're looking at that, it's gonna be really hard to get that from food. You know, the foods that are high in magnesium are gonna be things like green leafy vegetables, lots of different types of nuts and seeds, pumpkin seeds, things like that. But those also have anti-nutrients. They have oxalates, they have enzyme inhibitors, things like that, that can reduce overall absorption of a lot of these nutrients, okay? And so a lot, particularly magnesium. And so because of that, um, some animal foods, if you have enough stomach acid, you can get magnesium from eggs, from grass-fed meats, wild-caught salmon, from sardines with the bones, bone broth in general, right? All of those things are great. And I just recommend when it comes to diet, you stick with real foods, okay? I wouldn't overly concern yourself with anti-nutrients or with, you know, maybe negative things you may have heard about animal foods. I would stick with organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised animal products, organic fruits and vegetables, right? And consume really a healthy nutrient-dense diet. But I would recommend supplementing with magnesium. Just about everybody benefits from some level of magnesium supplementation. It could be as little as 100 milligrams a day of a highly absorbable magnesium. For many people, 
200 to 400 milligrams of additional magnesium plays a really big role. And they notice a huge difference in their overall health. Their brain functions better. They have better memory, better cognitive acceleration. Their ability to think sharply and quickly um, gets upregulated. Their energy levels improve. Their pain reduces. Better overall mental awareness, better mood, less anxiety, less depression. They sleep better at night. I mean, all of these things can improve with as little as, you know, even 100 milligrams of magnesium supplementation. <music>